Thank you for letting my daddy stay home. <laughs> Hello. Hope you enjoy his presentation. Oh, your cheeks are good. Cheeky children. Yes. yes, his little cheeks. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bill Wolf, and I'm so sorry that I'm, I'm not able to be there with you all today. But I do want to thank Anne and Emma for giving me the opportunity to still participate and present uh, via, uh, via the video. Uh, I do also want to apologize because uh, of my voice, I'm, my sniffles. Both of my sons are sick, and I seem to have caught whatever they have, so I apologize for that. Uh, this is Born in the EU. I was born in the EU. Uh, Bruce Springsteen, European fan tweets, and the importance of community. And this presentation really begins about in July 2012 when John Landau, uh, Bruce Springsteen's longtime friend and, and manager and producer, uh, created a blog post in which uh, he said regarding uh, recent shows in Sweden that the band plays for so many audiences around the world, but none are better than we find here. And you can imagine uh, that phrase, none are better, set off a bit of a firestorm on the Facebook page of the Bruce Springsteen web, uh, Bruce Springsteen's uh, Facebook page, where US fans were really upset and cursing, cursing them out, and oh my god, we're hurt, where Swedish fans were like, yeah, this is great, and other people were more thoughtful. The blogs started getting involved in this thinking about the issue, should Bruce Springsteen address the European issue, is there something going on there? Well, but, you know, what's interesting is that if they step back a little bit, uh, I think the fans would remember that Bruce has been addressing this issue all along. Uh, in 1999, he told Mojo, we are really connected with the European audience. It has been the center for an intense interest in the work that I've done for a long time. Uh, for In 2003, he says, for the best part of a decade, we've had a bigger audience overseas in the United States. Two-thirds of the audience has been, has been there. In 2012, he posted this little thank you note. Great thanks to all our European fans, all of our love. It's Bruce Springsteen, the East Jeep Band, his little guitar signature. He does not do this uh, for the American fans. And what's interesting is that since 1987, uh, the worldwide, outside the U.S. audience has been outselling um, the U.S. audience in terms of record sales and in terms of box office at the sh at the um, during the tours. And uh, the shows are are statistically longer and have more nuanced set lists uh, when they're overseas. And uh, Karen Rose, a longtime fan and an important fan, uh, Springsteen fan. Uh, was curious about this and wanted to really see for her own eyes uh, and feel for herself what it was like to be over there. And she comes to this con conclusion that it's not that the fans are necessarily better, uh, but the depending on how you define better, of course, but that the audience as a whole is different in crucial ways that have a direct impact on Bruce and the band's performances in Europe. So something is going on over there. And I am interested in uh, online communities and how people are composing in online spaces, and specifically Bruce Springsteen fans and Twitter. So I'm interested in seeing if, are we seeing significant differences uh, in how different concerts are being tweeted about. Um, so I have been archiving uh, Springsteen tweets, or I was archiving Springsteen tweets from between 2012 and 2013, and I archived about uh, 2.5 million uh, Springsteen related tweets. All tweets with the word Springsteen and associated hashtags. I've been conducting a netnography where I observe how St Springsteen fans are tweeting online and I've conducted an online survey of Springsteen fans and I'm going to be doing follow-up interviews uh, later in, in the year. And I've also been a fan of Springsteen in my life and that of course informs uh, my understanding of this of this community. Uh, excuse me. So the case studies that I'm going to be looking at <coughs> excuse me, today, uh, the first one is from the Meadowlands uh, in New Jersey, Springsteen's hometown, at the Izon Center. And the other one is from Leeds, England, the first direct center in July two th uh, of 2013. Uh, the significant difference between these two, one of the many, uh, is that the, the New Jersey show does not have a specific concert hashtag. Uh, none of the U.S. shows have a specific concert hashtag. Um, whereas the cat just fell. <laughs> uh, whereas the uh, the lead show has its own hashtag, Bruce Leeds, and uh, all the tweets that 
I'm looking at our pre-concert tweets. I'm specifically interested in the building of community to see if we see that, and that was where the I think that would happen in the, the pre-concert tweets rather than in the post-concert tweets, where you'd see community continuing, but we're really looking for the beginning of it right there. Now, a quick note on the Bruce uh, leads or the Bruce City co hashtag construct. This emerged in Bergen, Norway in 2009 during the Magic Tour when a man named Andres Ringdahl, uh, responding to a newspaper reporter, suggested that the newspaper reporter not use this BT Bruce hashtag. Uh, what was happening was that all the different media outlets has their own hashtag and Andres was suggesting that one hashtag like Bruce Bergen could unite them everything together in a unified whole and it would provide everyone with a much uh, easier way of tweeting about this event. And that uh, hashtag, it stuck. And all shows in Europe and Australia and uh, even South America have had their own Bruce City construct hashtag. In America, it just hasn't happened, and I'm not really, not really sure why. So um, I've been analyzing these codes using something called grounded theory, uh, which is a recursive method of analyzing text so that meaning emerges from the data itself. And what happens is you have a unit of analysis, one specific tweet, and you look for patterns within those tweets, and then you classify them based on what you think is happening in there. And uh, these are called codes, and, and uh, from the first round of analysis of the Meadowlands tweets, I was able to locate 16 uh, codes. But then, uh, when I started analyzing the Leeds tweets, uh, something very different was, was, uh, was happening, and I added three new codes to that. Generating, I changed locating uh, to be something very different than what it was before. Uh, before, uh, it was mostly just check-ins like Foursquare, and I changed that code to checking in and requesting. And uh, there are three codes I just want to focus on in more detail very quickly. Affiliating, generating, and locating. Affiliating is the use of a, of a Springsteen-related hashtag like Bruce Leeds or Bruce Buds or Springsteen, hashtag Springsteen, and you affiliate yourself with a community in, in that way. Generating are tweets that generate a community level of excitement or engagement with sur the surrounding community. Um, and uh, locating is a user locating oneself in a particular city. Like, I've made it to Leeds, uh, or look at this museum in Gijon, that sort of, that sort of tweet. Um, these are distinct from checking in tweets, which have a very different feel, and uh, these are very much located in a particular environment and a particular space. Um, so after uh, doing all the coding and quantifying all, all the data, uh, we get this nice uh, chart here. Uh, where the x-axis are the codes and the y-axis is the percentage of, of views, the blue is the IZOD tweets, and the orange is the leads. And we can see that in the area of community building, affiliating, generating, integrating, and locating, I can discuss those codes uh, later if you would like, uh, we see much more going on in the leads tweets. Indeed, generating and locating, we don't see any in the IZOD tweets. Uh, for communicating, engaging in direct communication, we see conversing, notifying, and tumbling, which is a form of retweeting. Of those three, only notifying uh, is higher in the uh, leads tweets. And that's mostly because people are referencing the Springsteen account uh, in, in many ways. And we can see that happening in a network uh, map of the, of the tweets. And here in this, in this map, each node or circle represents a specific account that has tweeted. The larger the uh, the larger the word, the more often it's referenced. So if we do a close-up of that area, we see that the Springsteen account has been referenced quite often. Uh, the Springsteen account is not run by Bruce himself. Uh, it is run, excuse me, by an intern for the record company. Uh, his bandmates do have their own accounts that they run, but he, he does not. Um, and we see that, he, that that account has been uh, referenced. We compare this to the Leeds network map, we see a very different uh, pattern emerging. We see direct communication between and among individuals and businesses, business accounts. And we can actually do a, a map, on a, a real map, uh, those businesses that I was able to find addresses for that were tweeting during that time. And you can see that they are 
very much located within Leeds City, and many, several are in the, the, the suburbs. But we do a comparison of this, and what, what I see is, uh, for the eyes on tweets, we see something that I'm calling unidirectional notification, where people are referencing the Springsteen account primarily, but there is very little back and forth communication amongst themselves, and none between Springsteen and anybody, the Springsteen account and anybody else. The Springsteen account rarely, if ever, actually communicates with uh, the general fan population. Uh, however, it, with the leads, we see a very complex communication structure going on, where businesses and individuals are communicating back and forth with one another, they're retweeting one another, and uh, we see that visualization going on uh, right here. And so what we need to do is we often, you know, looking at a map is one thing. We actually have to look to see at the tweets themselves to see what the differences are. And we see significant differences uh, when the tweets have a city-specific hashtag like Bruce Lee's and when they don't. So, for example, on the left, these are the eyes on tweets. Uh, Miss Lalderbarian says, waiting to see if 700 is the lucky number at the Springsteen show. That's great, but, you know, that is not grounded in any specific location. I had to go in and I did the searching and found this tweet, was able to add it, and I'm able to identify it as part of the eyes on tweets. However, Rock and Roll Sue here says, Bruce Leeds, 10 a.m. roll call, there are 89 and a few no-shows. By grabbing that and using that Bruce Leeds, she is identifying herself with a particular uh, space at a particular time that is very important. And we see this throughout the, the tweets. The next one for the IZOD, this is one of those Foursquare check-ins. Bruce, checking in. Well, it's, you're checking into an account. You're not really identifying yourself with a particular space. Here, 23.9 are getting too excited to tweet. Bruce leads. We're seeing him, I know it's, I know it's a him, uh, within this excitement about this event, this Bruce Leeds uh, event. And we see this for the next one as well. What's also interesting is we see hashtags to embrace fans and build community from the uh, from the local businesses, from the, the local area around the concert. So on the right, we'll start with that one. Here, this is the Marion Center, which Mer the Marion Center, which is directly across the street from the FD Arena where the concert was, and they were tweeting quite a bit during the sh before the show. And here's a retweet of FD Arena Tony, who's the uh, PR and marketing guy for the the arena, and he tweeted. One day, 23 hours remaining until Bruce leaves. This is a, he's got, he had this countdown going for days uh, with pictures of his, screenshots of his phone. And people were retweeting this, and this was enhancing the excitement. And using the Bruce, Bruce leads, the, the, the arena is adopting a fan hashtag that had been previously created by the uh, media industry. So there's a lot of interesting things going on here with relationships between fan, fans and, and media. And then later, uh, later on, they, they say, Spurs Springsteen ticket holder to show their ticket at Shake Leeds gets a free milkshake. Leeds, Bruce Leeds, and then Bruce Buds. And this is important because Bruce Buds is a very uh, esoteric uh, hashtag and is specific for a group of fans who label themselves as Bruce Buds. And this Marone Center is attempting to locate themselves in there to try to gain access to those fans to try to incorporate them into the, the conversation. It's a wonderful move. Uh, but the, if we go to the IZA, we have the Community Food Bank in New Jersey, which is a very important organization. Springsteen, every concert in the United States, he asks fans to bring canned goods and to donate money to the food banks. And here we see no hashtags, no identification with a specific event in any way that a fan could, could find very easily. Uh, it's like these tweets were just sort of shouted out the window and disappeared in the wind. Uh, if it, there's nothing to ground them in any sort of uh, specific reality, a specific location or specific space. And so I'm, I'm sort of rushing here because I'm losing time. Uh, what is happening with these uh, Bruce Leeds tweets? So first, uh, we're definitely seeing what uh, Mirko Schaefer, who's a professor at University of Amsterdam, calls bastard culture, which are interactions between users and corporations and the connectivity between markets and media practice are inherently intertwined. We see that going on significantly in these tweets in, in very fascinating ways that I don't have time to get into uh, here. But what that's leading to is a wonderful uh, thing called an information ecology, 
which is create, which is a theory forwarded by Bonnie Nardi and Vicky O'Day, which is a system of people, practices, and values and technologies in a particular local environment. And in the information ecologies, the spotlight is not on the technology, but on human activities. Uh, so we see this wonderful interplay between them. And information ecologies have lots of different uh, components, but the one that's important here is locality. And the locality is, in the, in the real world, is Leeds. In the online world is, is Bruce Leeds. This is a locality. And they say of the localities, the name of a technology identifies what it means to the people who use it. And by that, I'm taking this to understand that the name itself of the technology, the Bruce Leeds hashtag, provides identity for those people. And just as spaces themselves help provide identity, communities provide identity, um, concert locations provide identity, different towns on the tour provides identity, the Bruce Leeds hashtag, I think, is as real and important as the actual physical locations. So I think the hashtag itself is a locality. And fans who are tweeting and using that hashtag, and the businesses also, are benefiting from the creation of a dynamic, emergent, evolving community in an online space. One that is significantly different from what we're seeing in the eyes on tweets, which are people tweeting and sharing their excitement, but there isn't any hashtag that grounds them with any sort of community feel. And just as Karen Rose was able to locate substantial differences when she went to Europe and saw the concerts, here the data reveals that there are also substantial differences between how people are tweeting at least in the Bruce Leeds concert and in ones at the Eyes on Center in the United States. And I'm well out of time. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I look forward to hearing your questions. If you have any questions for me, tweet me at Bill Wolf. And if you want more information about the study, please go to springsteen.williamwolf.org. Thanks again, and hope to meet you in person one day.